Maybe it's just me, but have you ever sat back and thought, what's the deal with the farm animals of the Mushroom Kingdom? Little oinks, moo-moos, straight up, that's it, they're just called chickens, that's what they are. So you are telling me there's an established meat and dairy market in this universe. Is pizza ready, comrade? Yes, coming right up. Premier Gorbachev, Premier Gorbachev. You're not Raleigh. No, I am Boris, KGB. Look no further than the Mario Kart series, the best place to uncover details on the business district of the Mario universe. Examine these courses with a fine-toothed comb and you'd be astonished what simple Mario Kart tracks tell us about this wacky world we love oh so much. I'm sure I need not introduce this racing series from Nintendo, first released in 1992 and since gracing all Nintendo consoles thereafter, truly setting a standard for kart racers that few have been able to emulate to this day. Mario Kart is packed with character and polish, it's the game that really drew me into to this world for the very first time back in the Game Boy days. So I'll be examining some of the racetracks and their fictional sponsors in this video that have been right in front of our noses throughout the Mario Kart series. Come join me in slowing down to smell the roses or the the cows. What really got me going on this concept was taking a look at Toad's Factory, an oddly realistic and industrial setting for this game. Imagine hopping on a go-kart ride at the county fair and the man's like, I get left under the hydraulic press over the conveyor belt right at the incinerator and remember, no bumping. It's not safe. Here you'll find where the Mario Kart item boxes are canonically made. Yeah, let that sink in. Every time you smash one of those things needlessly, some toad has to put in hard labor. It's not magic, you know. These things don't just grow on trees. The evidence lies in these piston thingies that contain the same texture as an item box. Presumably, this rainbow goo appears to be pressed onto an existing crate containing a chosen item. This colorful material is far more brittle and allows a driver to collide with an item box with no detriment to the durability of their vehicle or their current speed. No clue what this item box material is chemically made out of, other than it seems to involve a great deal of pressure involving water and steam, judging from this turbine and its pipes. Oh, and a crucial step involved in mass producing item boxes is the whooping alarm. For positive morale, we got some factory propaganda showcasing a singing toad and the fruits of his work. Some people get to rescue princesses, and some have a 9 to 5 at the box factory. That's life, eh? A section of Toad's factory also represents a sorting area, wherein some item boxes are discarded and some are... Well, it kinda looks like they're both being discarded? I don't know, maybe this race takes place during some sort of worker strike? Like. Why the general manager Toad let them race in his factory, delay his supply line, and destroy the factory stock is beyond me. Over to the first of our fictional sponsors, Red Shell Strike Equipment. Alright, so this is the company that produces the Red Shells? Great. They're good at what they do. But do you know what else this implies? That the cowards behind the blue shell or spiny shell don't advertise their product. For all we know, it's a black market item never intended to be included in item boxes. Too much of a stretch for you? Well look, green shells they advertise out in the open air, plain as day. Only the most infamous shells company doesn't, and I don't like that. Someone needs to get to the bottom of it. Who is behind this? Wario's Gold Mine. When you first hear the name of the track, sure, it makes sense. Wario is all about making the coins, but when you think about it, this is a pretty serious upscale. Wario has hired what appears to be an entire mining village to harvest gold bars for him. Taking a closer look, he literally owns this entire place. Forget WarioWare Inc. Who needs to make indie games when you've got precious metals coming out the wazoo? Judging by the minecarts that fly by every lap, he is making a killing. It's safe to assume every cart pictured here contains an average of, uh, let's say, eight gold bars. If not more, that's hidden underneath, you know, eight seems like a good number. We'll estimate these represent a 400 ounce bar, which is considered the standard weight for gold bars. And as of the time of this recording, a single bar will run you, eh, you know, like $700,000. So on a good day, a staff ghost is capable of completing a Wario's gold mine track with a standard cart at a time of two minutes, 19 seconds. Let's just chalk that up to three minutes for an average racer. With a minecart stuffed with bars appearing every lap for three laps in a race, this implies Wario's gold production is putting out an average of, uh, uh, let's see here, let's see, um, 21 million dollars 
every three minutes. Mamma mia. And that's not all, folks. Wario has cranked up production to ridiculousness because here you'll find multiple minecarts on the track at once. Triple that dollar amount from earlier and, well, all I can say is that if Wario asks you to borrow a 20, now you know where to tell him to stick it. Sponsoring a handful of carts, Bowser's Oil in a similar vein. Does it surprise you that Bowser is an oil baron? I suppose it makes sense. He does have a pension for decorative fire and lava and laser shooting statues. Does anyone else find that last one weird? Perhaps this is partially where the hostility between the rivaling kingdoms stem from. War over oil, perhaps? Something tells me that's a little bit too close to reality. We're probably fighting over, uh, I don't know, stars, mushrooms, uh, frog suits. Now, with all likelihood, the Mario universe is just gushing with this stuff, and Bowser's just cashing in with his hip and trendy marketing. Whatever graphic designer Bowser got, uh, did a good job. A man or turtle with many talents. Thwomp Ruins. This track is pretty vanilla. Well, not that vanilla. Though, something that flew over my head at first is that, wait, Thwomps are an ancient race? I mean, I'd love to see someone put together a historic timeline of the Mushroom Kingdom, from the dinosaurs to the space travel, plus where the dawn of Thwomps fall in Mushroom history. Get on it. Now, who built these monuments and ruins? Be it the humorously named Womps, their trophy in Smash for Wii U states that they're friends. But could they house some sort of symbiotic relationship as well? Is this a place of worship we're racing through? Why do so many inanimate objects have eyes? What the hell is a Grindle? <sighs> the Mario iceberg runs deeper than we know. Basically, there's not a whole lot of information on these guys or what this place is doing here. But you never know. Maybe they'll get some love in a future game. Super Mario Odyssey 2, Origin of the Thwomp. I can see it. Nah, no, just kidding. In other historic news, sponsoring the Dragon Raceway is Lakitu Kung Fu, a poster that is completely adorable. I'd love to see a full-length Lakitu DreamWorks parody. Now, Nintendo is usually pretty sparing with this kind of humor. You'll find it prominently in dialogue, but seldom ever mentioning a company outside of Nintendo's own IPs. I assume a team of designers was really feeling the Kung Fu Panda vibe when creating this specific track with its dragon themes and more power to them. This does force me to conclude that the film industry in the Mario universe is pretty kick-ass. You folks have opened a can of worms now because I've just realized there must canonically be a Mario universe equivalent of Shrek. Who is it? Is it Spike? Finally, we have Moo Moo Meadows a sequel of sorts to the Moo Moo Farm course from Mario Kart 64. This adorably named Dirt Road sports wide open grass fields and a shimmering sun. Of course, who could forget the Moo Moos? Woo! This track permanently saved the term Moo Moo as a valid replacement for the word cow in my brain for years to come. To which all my friends were like, what? Are you okay? Well, take a look at Moo Moo Meadows Milk, advertised in Toad's Turnpike. Just looking at it reminds me of the Zelda Milk Bar. Milk and cheese, sure. Okay, but um, there is steak in the Mario universe. Oh God, please tell me it's coming from a giant bird or something and not this. So yep, the farm district of Mario seems to be much like our own. And it just got me thinking of how fun a cooking mama style Mario game would be. Super Mario Culinary, or you know, something better than that. Within the same cup, you'll find the sponsor of Mario Work Gear. Hey, hey, you really can steal his fit. Mario is cashing in on his iconic look well suited for the everyday worker. I imagine the day this line was released, the Mushroom Kingdom was looking like that one episode from Phineas and Ferb, you know the one. You have to give props to Mario characters for monetizing every facet of their life. Some toad selling overalls, that would never work, it's the star power. See what I did there? Of the name Mario, that brings in the gold coins. All right, well, what's next? Uh, Mario housing, oh, did that, okay. Now, one final question remains. Does Waluigi wear the Mario brand work gear? If so, I'm in. I trust that guy more than anything. I'll take five. In purple, of course. Speaking of Walu Man, did you know we have a video covering Waluigi's tragic life? Check it out and more right here on Mojo Plays. I've been Josh, as I always am, thanking you very much for watching. Be sure to drop a like and comment if you want to see more of this. I got plenty more tracks to talk about, believe me. Keep it locked in by hitting subscribe, and I'll catch you later. Bye.